Katie, if you could show the um, technology slides. Thank you. Hi, everyone. We'll get started in a few minutes. Just a couple of pieces of technology information. Um, so we have you muted during the presentation. Um, but we'll unmute you for breakout groups. Uh, this workshop is being recorded and we, there is a chat box and you can put your questions in there. We'll be able to answer some of them today and the rest um, we'll put in a meeting report later. Here's an email if you're having technical difficulties. Can you go to the next slide, Katie? Um, so if you're not familiar with the Zoom features, um, they appear at the bottom of your screen um, where you can start or stop your video. You can view the participants on the uh, sort of towards the middle of the of the bottom of the screen. If you click on participants, uh, you can pull up the chat box by clicking on chat. And this is what those will look like. Um, you also will have different view options towards the top of your screen to view full screen or not, and also to view gallery view or not. Um, one other thing to note is we had emailed out to participants um, fact sheets with the proposed projects for Montara and Moss Beach. Uh, so you might want to have those handy. Uh, during the meeting, we'll be going over those projects and in a little bit, I'll, if you don't have those, I will put the links to those in the chat box. I'll just wait for a few more participants to join and then I'll do that. Um, I think we're going to wait for a few more people to join. We'll wait about a minute or two and then we'll get started. But thanks so much for, for being on time today and for joining us. Um, I'm going to put those links to the documents that I mentioned in the chat right now. Um, Katie, if you could get the meeting started and then um, turn it over to Supervisor Horsley, that would be great. Sure. Hi, everyone, and welcome. Um, we're going to have an introduction by Supervisor Horsley, and then we'll jump into the rest of the meeting. Okay. You ready? Yeah. yeah. Thanks, Katie. Uh, good evening, and uh, thank you for joining us for this community meeting on Connect the Coast site. I know I was just amazed the number of people have uh, tuned into this Zoom meeting. It's like 86 people. So this meeting is one of a series, and tonight we are focusing on the communities of Montero and Moss Beach. And we hope to gather your feedback on proposed projects in these areas to improve mobility and inform the Connect the Coast site plan. Whether you are familiar with the Connect the Coast side or not, all voices are welcome to join us in learning and moving forward together. And I would like to thank the Mid Coast Community Council for their leadership and collaboration on the recent mobility survey and attendance at the Connect the Coast side community events. And uh, now I'm going to turn this over to Katie Faulkner, who is a wonderful young woman who's a member of our planning and building team to begin the presentation. And I just want to say, say one other thing is that this uh, COVID-19 really is, uh, is really requiring us to do all these kinds of Zoom meetings. And so there's, there's kind of a two-edged uh, sword to this in that one sense that we can get a lot of people to come to a meeting, probably more so than we could in a public meeting. And, uh, you know, in some ways it's a lot more convenient because we're not, you know, we're not driving over there. You're not having to leave family and come someplace else. So we hope this is really a good experience for you and for us. It's a good way for us to get a lot of uh, feedback from you. And, um, you know, I know other people have felt like they'd like to have be, you know, in person, but my guess is that with this virus is not going away and we probably are not gonna be able to put together groups of, looks like there are now uh, 92 people on this. There's no way that we could put 92 t people together in a meeting without potentially risking spreading this virus. So in any case, uh, we hope this is, uh, works for you. I think, hope it'll work for us. And uh, again, I'm going to turn this back over to Katie. Thank you, Supervisor Horsley. Um, I'm Katie Faulkner. I'm a planner with the Planning and De Building Department. Um, and I'm, we're, today, we're here to continue the conversation about the Connect the Coastside Plan. 
We held the first virtual conversation on May 30th. And at that meeting, we discussed the overall goals of Connect the Coast Side and the recommended projects. And today's meeting will focus on the communities of Moss Beach and Monterra specifically. And it will be an opportunity to specifically address the projects in those areas. We wanna hear from you, which mobility improvements are most important and what might be missing from the current draft of the plan. We will also be hosting a third virtual conversation on June 25th, and that will focus on Princeton, El Granada, and Miramar. So now I'll introduce a few of our Connect the Coast Side team members. Uh, we have Debbie Schechter, our lead facilitator for today. Hi, Debbie. Uh, we have Joe LeClaire, planning manager, and Shonda Singh, our senior transportation planner. And Joe and Shonda will be helping us answer questions that come up today. So thanks, Joe and Shonda, for joining us. All right, now I'll hand it back to Debbie. Thanks, Katie. Um, so my name is Debbie Schechter. I'm a facilitator. And so my role today is to help guide the process of the meeting so that you all can learn about and participate in the content. Um, as Katie mentioned, the purpose of the meeting today is for you to hear about Connect the Coast Side um, and specifically the projects in Montara and Moss Beach to dialogue with each other and share your feedback with the county about the specific transportation projects that would help address your concerns and also what you feel like is missing from the plan. Um, we know that some of you are very familiar with Connect the Coast Side and others of you are just learning. So this meeting is really an attempt to um, balance all of those interests and enable you to participate. Um, we also know that some of you participated in the first meeting on May 30th, which was an overview of the plan. And some of you were able to give us feedback on that meeting. And so we um, tried to incorporate some of, the, some of that feedback to make this meeting uh, as effective as possible. Um, we are hoping to allow you a little more time to dialogue in the breakout groups. And we also are capturing your notes. We have a, a designated facilitator and note taker, and you'll hear a little bit more about that later. Um, so our agenda today, uh, we just did the welcome. I'm going to go over some group agreements in a minute. Uh, Katie will give the presentation on the plan and the projects. We will have a little bit of time for some clarifying questions. We're not going to have a lot of time. Um, I ask that you put your questions in the chat and anything that doesn't get answered today will get answered in a meeting document that will go out to all of you later. Um, we're going to have discussions in the breakout groups, and then we'll have a brief report out of what was said in those breakout groups. Uh, we'll go over next steps, and then we'll close the meeting. I'm um, going to ask for people's indulgence. Um, it's possible that we may go a few minutes over. We really try not to do that in these meetings, but we do want to make sure that um, there's time for discussion. So um, certainly if you have to leave early, that's fine. Um, also make yourselves comfortable. Obviously you're at home, so do what you need to do uh, to make yourself comfortable and participate in the meeting. And uh, we really appreciate your being here. Um, okay, so next slide, please. Um, group agreements, uh, we put these together to help make sure that the meeting is as effective and um, constructive as it can be. So we ask that when you get in the breakout groups that you speak from your own experience, um, that you listen for understanding, that you respect differences and be curious, that you allow everyone to participate, and that you allow the facilitator to guide the process. Um, so I know you can, you have the opportunity to do some reactions. You can show a thumbs up would be great if folks could do that. That's at the bottom of your screen. So I see that, so I know that folks are agreeing with these. I see some thumbs up. Thank you. All right, next slide, please. So we are gonna do a quick poll question um, just to find out where you live um, and, or, and or work on the coast side. So if you can see the poll, Montara, Moss Beach, elsewhere on the coast side or other. So we'll give you a few more seconds to respond to the poll. I see a lot of answers coming in. 
I'll give you about five more seconds. Three, two, one. It looks like people are done. And let's see, it looks like we have about 64% of folks are from Moss Beach, 20% Montara, and 8% elsewhere, and 8% other. Um, so thank you. Um, and with that, I'm going to turn it over to Katie for the presentation. Um, and I just want to mention if you were able to pull up the fact sheets on the projects in Moss Beach and Montara, um, I'll put those in the chat again. It might be helpful to refer to during the presentation. And again, um, post your questions in the chat and we'll get to them at some of them at the end. Thank you. All right, thanks, Debbie. To give you an idea of what you'll hear in this presentation, I will provide a short overview of the plan to give some background to anyone who is new to this planning process. I'll review what we've heard so far from past outreach and from the May 30th meeting. Then I'll go into some detail about the projects proposed for Montera and Moss Beach. And finally, I'll give a short explanation about how this plan will be implemented. So this effort was originally born out of the last update of the local coastal program, which for reference is a set of policies that is used to guide development on the coast while still protecting coastal resources. That update included a policy that called for the development of a comprehensive transportation management plan to address the traffic impacts of development on roads and highways in the mid coast. So when I say comprehensive transportation plan, I mean that Connect the Coast side covers the topics of walking, biking, public transit, driving, and land use. The plan looks at existing conditions, makes estimates about future condi conditions, and then recommends projects to improve mobility. The benefit of Connect the Coast side is that it will create an overall vision for transportation on the mid coast, and it clarifies the priorities for future investments in transportation. Another benefit of looking at all these topics in one plan is that we can coordinate our recommendations to make sure that all these modes of travel work together. So for example, we can make improvements that give people the option to walk or bike to their local destination and that can in turn uh, ease car traffic. So one thing to note is that there are some other planning efforts also related to transportation that you might have heard about. And while I won't go into too much detail right now in the interest of time, I will just say that we're all working together to make sure that these plans complement one, one another and build on each other. So the planning area for Connect the Coast Side is shown on the map in purple. And this is where Connect the Coast Side has recommended projects. The planning area includes the unincorporated areas surrounding Highway 1 and Highway 92. The orange color on the map shows the traffic analysis area, which helped pr to provide background information used to make some of the recommendations in the plan. So in particular, the plan focuses on the unincorporated mid-coast, which is shown on this map. For reference, when I say unincorporated, I mean the parts of the county that are outside of a city's boundaries. So for example, Half Moon Bay is an incorporated city while Montera and Moss Beach are unincorporated communities that are served by the county government. All right, what we've heard. So the Connect the Coast Side planning effort originally began back in 2014, and the work leading up to today included quite a bit of public outreach and feedback. And from that previous public outreach, we've heard a few different themes emerge about what's important when considering transportation improvements on the mid-coast. Distilled down, those things are improving traffic, increasing safety, increasing transportation choices, increasing sustainability, providing access to the coast, and preserving mid-coast character. And all of those things are what Connect the Coast Side is trying to accomplish. So, the May 30th virtual conversation was focused on the overall plan, and we got a lot of great feedback from those discussions. So on the screen now are just a few 
of the many points that were discussed at the overview meeting. We heard from people about the kind of changes they'd like to, th they'd like to see. Things like projects to decrease traffic, better solutions for people walking to get across Highway 1, continuous sidewalks and bike bikeways, and for the plan to address things like evacuation and emergency response, bike share, on-demand transportation, and age-friendly improvements. And we'll be putting together a report that includes all the feedback we heard from each of the, these three meetings, and we're anticipating releasing that report in July after the last meeting is wrapped up. Those projects. So we've had some questions about how the Connect the Coast Side project ideas were generated, and the answer is those projects came from a variety of places. But most of the projects uh, come from ideas or concerns that we originally heard with the community. Um, some projects were carried over from previous planning efforts, like the Highway 1 Safety and Mobility Study, and other projects were added to fix a specific problem found by the traffic analysis. All right, let's start with the projects that are common to both Moss Beach and Montero. So on the screen now is a map that shows the location of these projects. And they include things like proposed Highway 1 crossings, bike lanes on Highway 1, bike parking, improvements to the Highway 1 roadway, and the parallel trail. Let's start with the parallel trail. So right now, there aren't a lot of options for traveling between the different communities on the Midcoast. And we've heard from residents that for a lot of people, the only feasible option is to drive. But we've also heard that a lot of people would like an alternative to driving. And there could be some benefits from that, including help, helping to reduce traffic. Um, so we're recommending building a multimodal parallel trail on the east side of Highway 1 to connect Mont Montera, Moss Beach, El Granada, Miramar and Half Moon Bay. The trail would be separated from Highway 1 in order to provide a safe way for people to walk and bike between these mid-coast communities. We've also heard from people who live in Montera and Moss Beach that trying to cross Highway 1 on foot can be difficult because traffic can move fast and there aren't enough marked crosswalks. The one crosswalk at Virginia Avenue in Moss Beach doesn't have any lights or beacons to help drivers see when somebody is trying to cross, and we've heard it's not working very well. So we're recommending the installation of addi additional crossings along Highway 1 with high visibility striping and pedestrian activated beacons, which could look something like the pictures on the screen now. Uh, so the top picture is of a crosswalk at a roundabout in Burlingame. And the bottom picture shows overhead lights that stop traffic only when a person activates them. So right now, um, many of the bus stops in Montera and Moss Beach lack benches and shelters. And we've heard that they can be difficult to get to because of the lack of sidewalks and marked crosswalks nearby. So to make it easier and more comfortable for people to take the bus, we're recommending adding benches and shelters to bus stops and installing crosswalks and sidewalks in the areas that lead up to the bus stops. We're also recommending adding a new northbound bus stop near the 16th Street and Highway 1 intersection to complement the existing southbound bus stop at that location. If we can make it easier to ride the bus, uh, that might take some cars off the road and help to improve traffic. Right now, Highway 1 throughout the study area is made up of inconsistent roadway and lane widths and narrow or non-existent shoulders. The, so Connect the Coast Side recommends creating standardized safe roadway designs for the for Moss Beach and Montera areas of Highway 1. This standardization would happen for two different zones. The village zone is located in the two community centers and would include creating curbs and gutters to define the roadway edge and ensuring in consistent lane widths of less than 12 feet in order to slow motorists. The fringe zone, which is on either side of a village zone, would include adding valley gutters to define roadway edge 
and ensuring consistent lane widths of less than 12 feet on segments where speeds are below 45 miles per hour. Slowing motorists in the village zones would help make it easier for people to use the recommended highway crossings and it would make it easier for people to turn on and off the highway. This recommendation is an example of a project that came from the Highway 1 Safety and Mobility Study. So part of the Highway 1 redesign would include adding striped bike lanes to Highway 1 to create space for people to bike to their destinations. So the top picture on the screen is an example of another area of Highway 1 that has a striped bike lane running alongside it and then a parking lane beyond that. Uh, we also recommend adding bike parking to Montera and Moss Beach so that people have a safe place to store their bikes when they make a stop. So here is a graphic to help visualize what it might look like to add bike lanes to Highway 1. And this cross, cross section is modeled after Ethel Door and Highway 1 in Moss Beach. The top shows how space is allocated on Highway 1 right now, and the bottom shows how we could add in bike lanes. So in addition to the projects I just mentioned, there are also a, a few proposed projects that are specific to Moss Beach. These include proposed roundabouts or signals at certain intersections, some improvements to Carlos Street, the completion of the coastal trail on county streets, and a proposed park and ride lot. So let's start with the Carlos Street improvements. For reference, the photo on the screen is looking down Carlos Street from Belmar. One suggested improvement could be to complete the sidewalk on the north side of Carlos Street, as there are a few spots right now without a sidewalk, like shown on this picture. It's also recommended uh, to add speed humps and digital speed back see, excuse me, digital speed feedback signs to help calm traffic on Carlos, um, since we want people to feel safe walking and biking in the area. We are also recommending converting Carlos Street to a one-way street between Valimar and California Avenue. This would create space for the parallel trail while avoiding some sensitive habitat in the median strip. So here's another graphic to show you how Carlos Street could change with the addition of the parallel trail and by converting it to a one-way street. So the existing, also the existing parking on the street would be reversed to fit with the new one-way street design. All right, the plan also recommends adding more on-street parking to Carlos Street. And for example, here's a segment that doesn't really have any parking to find right now. Okay, uh, another recommendation is to build a multi-purpose parking lot that would make it easier for commuters to use public transit during the week and provide parking for recreational visitors on weekends. This multi-purpose parking lot would include green infrastructure and bicycle parking. And here's an image that shows um, a potential location for this parking lot. Uh, okay. So another thing we've heard is difficult for people is getting onto Highway 1 from side streets because traffic is either moving too fast or there's too much of it. So to help make it easier to get on and off of Highway 1, we're recommending improving three intersections in the Moss Beach area at 16th Street, California Street, and Cypress Avenue. Um, those intersection improvements would have the benefit of decreasing traffic interruptions and helping to improve travel times. And these improvements could either be roundabouts or traffic signals, and which one is chosen would ultimately depend on the outcome of a required Caltrans study. And so for reference, the image on the screen is of a roundabout in Burlingame. Connect the Coast Side recommends completing the coastal trail 
from Montera to Half Moon Bay. In Montero, the coastal trail merges with the parallel trail route, but in Moss Beach, they run alongside um, two separate, they run along two separate routes. The coastal trail runs through the Fitzgerald Marine Reserve and Pillar Point Bluff, where there are already completed trails, but it also run, runs along some county streets to get to those parks. Um, so completing the coastal trail would include making those county roads friendly friendlier places to walk and bike, potentially by adding sidewalks and shared bike routes. Okay. Um, moving on to Montera, we already reviewed some of the things on this map, but a few of the recommended projects that are specific to Montera are improvements to Main Street to accommodate the parallel trail, stop signs proposed for side streets, and creating a safe walking and biking route to Fairlawn View Elementary School. So right now, our plan doesn't actually address providing a safe route to school, but it's something that came to our attention since releasing the public draft of the plan, and we want to include it in our next update. Uh, we've heard from people who live in the Midcoast that traffic can be pretty bad around school drop-off times, and one solution to try to lessen traffic is to create a route along which kids and families feel comfortable walking and biking to school so that they don't have to drive. This would include installing sidewalks and crosswalks uh, that would run up from the parallel trail route to Fairlawn View Elementary School. So one potential op uh, option would be Fifth Street to LeConte, but um, the exact route is still to be determined and would hopefully be determined from uh, input by the community. So Main Street will be part of the parallel trail route, but instead of a separate trail, this part of the route will consist of sidewalks and a shared bike route. To make it easier and more comfortable to walk along Main Street, we're recommending completing the sidewalk network and installing ADA curb ramps. So the pictures on the screen now are all of Main Street, and a couple show locations where there currently aren't sidewalks and one location where there currently is a sidewalk. Uh, Main Street improvements would also include constructing curb extensions and crosswalks. Curb extensions decrease the length of time a pedestrian is in the street and a striped crosswalk will let drivers know to look out for somebody crossing the road. Right, and that takes us to the end of our, uh, our proposed projects. But I'll just very quickly go over plan implementation. So let's hypothetically jump forward a little bit and imagine that this plan is all finalized. How would these projects be implemented? How would they be paid for? So one thing to note is that these projects won't happen all at once. They'll be implemented over the next 20 years. Some projects will happen in the short term, some in the medium term, and some will be long term goals. And over the years, these projects will be paid for with a mix of county funding, regional or statewide grants, and, the, and a new uh, land use policy that would collect fees from development. And each of these projects would be implemented with its own public process and public noticing. And that wraps up my presentation for the moment. So I'm going to hand things back to Debbie. Thanks, Katie. Um, so I have been monitoring the chat and I note that there are a lot of questions and a lot of comments. So I wanna let you know that we are recording the chat and so all of your comments that are in there will go back to the county. Um, there are a, a number of questions in here and I'm gonna, um, ask, uh, we're gonna be able to address some of them but not all of them. The rest will be addressed um, later in a meeting report that will go to all of you. So I'm going to start with um, one that was asked by a couple of people, which is, um, uh, can the county or can the county explore um, what is working in rural areas or semi-rural rural areas along Highway One? So what? Um, transportation solutions are working there. There was a concern that some of the solutions are in urban areas like Burlingame. So the question is, what is working in um, semi-rural areas or rural areas along Highway 1 that could be explored here?
Um, yeah, that's a good point. Uh, I don't know if Joe wants to answer that question or. Sure, I'm happy to. Um, so the example that was provided from Burlingame was simply an example to show you what a roundabout looks like. It wasn't intended to um, uh, characterize an urban solution for um, a semi a, a suburban setting like this one. Um, so the, the densities in the mid coast, um, the residential densities in the mid coast are suburban. They're about, you know, five, six dwelling units to the acre. And um, we think that the solutions that we proposed uh, here are, are uh, recognizing the unique character of the uh, coast side with its um, lower uh, level of intensity of, and, and, uh, and yet some of the intersection improvements like roundabouts are, um, are needed as we see some more development occur because um, that's what the build out uh, projections show that we were required to develop by the California Coastal Commission. So we have really tried to um, respect the character of the coast side with the proposals we've made, but um, we're absolutely interested in hearing from the community about those. Um, thanks, Joe. Um, there also are a couple of questions about um, airport. One person says airport road, one person says airport street, but i um, wondering why the plan doesn't address uh, traffic on airport. The plan um, addresses improvements for uh, bicycle and pedestrian improvements along airport street and um, the um, if, if there are problems with the amount of traffic on Airport Street, um, that's um, something that we haven't heard before from the meetings that we've had. And um, that's part of the reason why intersection control at Cyprus is contemplated because we expect that um, um, some increase in traffic will occur as a result of the big wave project and uh, necessitate intersection control there. But um, we haven't heard until tonight that there was uh, excess traffic on Airport Street. Okay, it may be Airport Road. Um, I'll have to look at the questions in more detail. Um, so one question is, um, why doesn't Connect the Coast Side address evacuation routes like for tsunamis or earthquakes? We don't yet, but you know, that's something we've heard a lot. And so that's one of the things that we want to address in our next update of the plan, because it's, it is something that's really important. Um, I mean, Connect the Coast Side might not be the right place for, you know, a whole evacuation plan, but it's something we definitely want to address. Okay, and there are several questions um, about how Connect the Coast Side will be paid for, how the projects in it will be paid for. Well, in the implementation chapter, we identify a wide variety of funding sources that could be tapped for um, funding the projects. And I think the segment of the parallel trail that is um, soon to be constructed between Half Moon Bay and El Granada is a good case in point because it um, is funded by a variety of grants and funding from the county and um, the Transportation Authority. So um, whenever there's a, a, a the projects in Connect the Coast Side are, are put together in a design and, and designed, then we have to use those designs to go seek funding. And we'll seek funding from a wide variety of sources. Uh, and, and the sources will vary depending on the project because some uh, projects will compete better in, for other sources of funding than um, so, for example, active transportation funding uh, for bikes and, and pedestrian improvements may be different from going to MTC for improvements or uh, roadway projects. Okay. Um, and then one question was about, um, is it possible to do some of the projects sooner than 10 to 20 years? Um, so, like some of the, the bike and walking paths seem to be popular. Yes, as I mentioned, um, we're, we're um, 
close to going out to bid for construction of the first segment of the um, of the parallel trail, and we understand the importance of the parallel trail uh, to the overall coastside uh, community. So we're going to prioritize that in um, the um, in the plan. And, and what we'd like to hear from the community is what priorities they think we should focus on in terms of um, transportation improvements um, in the plan. And that's a great segue, Joe, because I see a lot of, as I mentioned, there are a lot of comments in the chat um, about, about um, things like roundabouts, about speed bumps, about uh, crossings on Highway 1, about public transit, and a lot of really good ideas. And so we will capture those in the chat, but we also encourage you to share those when we get into the, the breakout groups. Um, so with that, um, we are going to um, move into the breakout groups. And um, let's see, we had a, uh, some technology issues earlier, so we will see um, how we do this time. Um, we are all learning from this. Um, and let's see. Um, sorry, I'm, I'm checking messages from facilitators as I'm getting ready for this. Um, we're, we're ready to go when you are, Debbie. Okay, great. Thank you. Um, so the um, main point of the breakout groups is for you all to dialogue with each other and to be able to share your thoughts on the types of transportation improvements and the projects that are most important to you. Um, and so we are going to have a facilitator and a note taker with you in the breakout groups. There was a question about how feedback would be captured. So the note taker will be taking notes. They won't capture every word you say, but they will be capturing your main ideas and you'll be able to see their screen and um, the ideas that they're capturing. Um, all of that will be put into a report that will be sent out to you all. Um, so you will probably have four or so people in your breakout room and we're going to encourage you to put your video on if possible. We'll unmute you and then you'll be in the breakout groups for, uh, let's see, I would say, Janeth, we can probably do about, we can probably do 30 minutes at this point in the breakout groups. Uh, so Janeth will set the breakout groups for 30 minutes. Um, Katie, if you could go to the next slide. Um, these are the questions that we are going to focus on in the breakout groups. So uh, what the county really wants to understand is of the projects that were talked about today for Moss Beach and Montara, which ones are most important to you? And related to that, which ones would encourage you to walk, bike, or take transit? And then the second question is really about what's not in the plan, like what all these ideas that you have that aren't in the plan, what, which, what do you want to share with the county? What else can the county do to improve transportation? What's missing from the plan specifically for Moss Beach and Montara? Um, and again, I see a, you know, a lot of comments coming in in the chat and that's great. We'll capture those and we want you to be able to talk about those in the breakout groups. Um, so with that, um, after the breakout groups, we will have your facilitator and note taker report out on some brief themes. Um, we'll talk about next steps and then we'll, we'll close out the meeting uh, around eight o'clock or so. So we hope that um, you all will be able to stick around for the breakout groups. I know that um, some people in the last meeting really appreciated the breakout groups. Others had a a different experience and we hope that we will have more people in the breakout groups today. We'll be able to capture your notes a little better. So we hope that you will, will give us a chance. Um, so with that, uh, I believe we are gonna put you into breakout rooms. It may take uh, a little bit of time and we may end up having to switch people at the last minute. So we ask you to bear with us, but we really hope that you'll stick around and join the breakout group conversations uh, and share your ideas. So thank you. Great. Uh, so I'm going to send everyone to breakout room. Let's see. Janet, can you tell if everybody's back? Yeah, everybody's back. Okay, great. 
Um, well, thank you everyone for sticking around for the breakout groups. I hope you had good discussions. I apologize. I know that there was at least one group that had some technical challenges, both with uh, not enough people in the room and some audio issues. Um, and we wish that we could solve all the technology issues and we're, we're working on it. Um, each meeting is a learning experience for us. And so um, we apologize if there were problems, but um, we are, as I said, we're learning every time. Um, so what we wanna do now is to have you all be able to hear just a little bit about what was discussed in the other groups and know that this is not the comprehensive summary, um, that we are going to capture the notes from the breakout groups and put those together as part of a summary report. But what we wanna do now is just get a really short report um, from the facilitators and note takers in each group of a couple of key points that came up in your group. Um, so I'm just gonna go through the groups in order and ask the facilitator or note taker to share what came up for you, what came up in your group. And um, in the interest of time, I may push you along a little bit, but um, if you can share a couple main points, that would be great. So the first group is um, Jackie and Chris. Sure, thanks Debbie. Um, in room one, we discussed in the need for increased safety. We talked a lot about um, anecdotes about people who are being hit crossing the street, especially um, on Highway 1. We found general support for walking and biking improvements, especially for commuting within neighborhoods. And then lastly, we talked about improved public transit, especially on Highway 1 corridor for commuting to Halfway, Halfway Bay and Pacifica. And finally, general is support for a roundabout. Um, as a calming measure, as a traffic calming measure. Thank you. Great, thank you very much, group one. Um, group two is Caleb and Bray. Thank you. Uh, in group two, uh, there was a great deal of interest in pedestrian improvements, though also an acknowledgement that most people continue to drive. Um, there are a number of questions uh, following up about the hows and the whys of things, um, such as how these, trans these improvements will hold up in bad weather, um, and why certain things are located in various places. Great, thank you very much, group two. Um, so group three is Carrie and Lawrence. Hi there, um, we had a great group. Um, we have a few highlights. Um, improvements for biking, walking trails, and bus stops. We also would like to have more discussion about evacuation. That might be a separate meeting, um, but it's a great topic. And we also had some concerns about new homes, new proposed homes, potentially overwhelming the neighborhood and the proposed closure of Carlos Street increasing traffic dramatically. Uh, thank you. Great, thank you, group three. Um, group four is Susan and Shonda. Yes, uh, we talked a lot about Airport Road and the concerns about people speeding and parked cars and not having sidewalks. So that was definitely, there was an interest in slowing traffic, sidewalks and pedestrian um, walkways to make it more safe. In Montero, we talked about with the safe route to school to Farallon needing stop signs along 5th and we identified where those would be and then talked about um, the interest in the safe highway crossings of 101 um, at several several spots, so we noted those. Great, thank you for doing that and having some specific locations that you identified. Um, group five is Julia and Hania. Um, in our group, there was general support for the roundabout and uh, excitement for them to start um, uh, the process of building them. Um, there is very much dislike for traffic signals as they're considered more uh, urban and not rural enough for the village feel um, of the area. Uh, there is a uh, great interest in the evacuation plan and uh, involving um, mid pen they would like more transparency as there's only one way in and one way out and there is such high uh, fire risk. Um, and um, uh, folks would like to see sidewalk built for, for kids who are walking to Farallon on Highway 1. Great, thank you, group five. Um, group six is Jose and Summer. Hello everybody, I just wanna first of all thank my group. Uh, they were very sort of um, uh, very talkative and shared a lot of great ideas. Um, and then I wanna thank Summer for being a great note taker 
I really like the idea of note taking because I felt like we captured a lot of uh, their ideas a lot better this time around. And so in no particular order, uh, some of the, uh, the key points that our group pointed out was, you know, a short term solution uh, uh, completed, uh, what can be completed soonest? You know, there's a lot of talk about different ideas, different plans uh, for a while. Um, at the same time, they need to see some uh, straightforward, easy access type of sort of approaches and solutions to be able to start working on some of these things. Um, uh, another uh, concern was cost and motivation behind the project. Uh, the concern behind what does fair share mean? Uh, cost models for different sort of approaches and of course the ability to vote on some of these costs um, and then finally concern with endangered species what's the plan with that how are they going to approach it uh, once again thank you very much thank you thank you group six uh, group seven is Ida and Rachel hello uh, this is Rachel uh, we had a very lively conversation and um, there was a lot of interest in um, keeping the conversation, the plan around maintaining the character of the communities on the coast. Uh, and one positive um, part of the plan that folks really liked was the parallel trail and the thought for um, a pedestrian underpass and seeing a lot of community support for that. There was a big interest from the group to continue this conversation with the planning department staff and to have more detailed conversations about these projects as well as a conversation about like the county's long-term thought process and thinking that some of that long-term thought of the new development and these you know ideas in the plan might not be well aligned okay thank you group seven um group eight is david and camille hi everyone uh so our group was uh, mighty respectful and really shared ideas wonderfully uh, together. So uh, just to echo the thoughts that were expressed in our breakout room, there was a lot of um, ideas around bike path safety solutions uh, north of the Montera area, um, specifically in that Devil's Slide area. Um, and uh, we also talked a lot about how traffic is from visitors, not the residents of the coast. Uh, and uh, there was a lot of expression that um, in light of COVID-19, the plan needs to be reassessed with a lens of more realism um, that could seem more effective with the current situation that we're going through. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, so our next group is nine, um, Leva and um, Katie. Hi, so uh, the high level outline is that people in our group were for the parallel trails and the roundabouts. Uh, the second thing though is the, there were lots of uh, discussion and comments about really going into the details of how many things, how it's going to happen, the parallel trails, and um, concerns about the cost and the safety of the roundabouts, even if they were for it. Like, uh, and um, and then so the, the questions asked were about the real timeline and the budget, and then also about what could be, as some one of the group said, what could be already done as interim projects, uh, mm -hmm. short term projects and simple projects in in the meantime. And we had really a great group, with very very constructive. So there are lots of details in the notes uh, you'll see. Thank you. Thank Great. you for this group. Thank you very much. Um, so group 10 is um, Adriana and Camille. Adriana, did you want me to report? Oh, yes, please. Oh, okay. So in terms of the projects that were important to the commenters in our group, and it was a very um, good, really good discussion, very detailed. Um, they thought the most um, important projects were the parallel trail, the highway one crossing um, at Wineke in California and Moss Beach, that's a crazy intersection, um, as well as the highway, uh, highway one crossing at Second Street next to La Costa Nera. And they definitely wanna see the safe route to um, schools um, to Farallon View included in the plan. And then as far as what's missing, um, there's some uh, street, dead ends that make pedestrian circulation between Moss Beach and Montero very difficult. Um, there's um, actually more emphasis on bus routes and uh, looking at the whole system and, and making it sure that the neighborhoods are more connected to 92 and Highway 1 and to different neighborhoods and less need for trails, signals, and roundabouts. 
Um, and one person said that the Carlos Street closure um, at Highway 1 at the north end of Carlos Street doesn't make sense. They uh, just suggest a need for a right turn only onto Highway 1 from Carlos Street. Um, and someone also suggested that all these neighborhood connections um, may not be that utilized due to the weather and that, that people may not use the trails as much as we think. Or might not walk yeah. as much as we think. Thanks very much. Um, so we have uh, five more groups to go. I'll ask you to try to keep your report outs pretty brief. 11 is Saini and Joe. Thank you. Um, we had a very lively discussion. We seem to focus mostly on Moss Beach. Um, one of the, uh, uh, in answer to question one, people were supportive of um, improvement for crossings at Cyprus, both for pedestrians and bicycles. Um, and, and generally there was a lot of support for the um, bicycle improvements, although there was a recognition that um, it may not be practical for shopping. Uh, similarly, a comment was made about transit in that way. Um, and evacuation routes, like other groups, played um, large in our group. There's some people are very concerned about, given the heightened awareness of um, some of the uh, of the hazards that may occur. And then um, one of the um, additional uh, projects that was suggested was adding the Green Valley Trail at the north end of the plan area up to the southern end of the, um, of the tunnel as a, as a project, um, as part of the coastal trail. And um, in answer to question two, we heard some concerns that Connect the Coast Side is not a community-based plan, but is uh, primarily supporting uh, developments and projects that are being considered by decision makers. Um, there was a desire to see uh, pedestrian undercrossings at busy areas like at SAMS. And um, so I'll leave it there, but we did uh, get a lot of good input and we had to resort to the chat because some people were unable to use their microphones. Okay, thank you. Um, next is 12, Sean and Lisa. Thanks, Debbie. Yeah, uh, just all participants in our group were from Moss Beach. Um, so these are focused on that area primarily. There was support for pedestrian under or overpasses. Um, you know, it both supports safety and, uh, and traffic flow. There was support for safe routes to school, uh, generally reducing the need for cars for schools. Crosswalks on Highway 1, there was, uh, you know, both support for it. Uh, everyone, I think, acknowledged that the current, current one is not safe. Um, there's not enough visibility, um, but there's also concern about adding more and slowing the traffic flow. Roundabouts, similarly, um, you know, some support, some concern about it slowing everything down. Um, and, and specifically saying at California Street, there's five streets in the slope. So is there enough space? Is it technically possible? Is it going to, you know, keep things flowing and, and not slow it down? In terms of transit, um, several people commute over the hill, and it's not don't don't feel that it's uh, you know, uh, appropriate for that. Supports that now, or even locally with with families. And finally, budget clarification: where's the money coming from? Thank you. Um, so we have three more groups. Thirteen is Alice and Kelsey. Yes. So there was a lot of detailed discussion, but the main sentiments that came out was a lot of concern about evacuation routes and thinking that should be prioritized and included in the plans, as well as a feeling that the plan does not reflect the feelings of the residents right now on the coast, that it's trying to fix a problem that doesn't need to be fixed and reflects more what developers want and to encourage future development. Okay, thank you. Um, group. The next group is group 13, um, Jerry and Will. Jerry Hi, or Will? Sorry, yeah. Hi. Um, well, we had a very lively group. Most of our folks were from Moss Beach and most were very involved in uh, or either lived on or around Carlos Street and were very concerned about, voiced a lot of concerns about the fact that the Carlos Street plan that was being discussed here was at the other end from where Cyprus was, as the Cyprus development was, and wasn't really addressing what they felt was going to be a, a very large traffic problem it's as a result one. of Cyprus. Oh, I forgot. Yeah, not, no. I'm sorry. Oh. And um, 
they they also felt that the, the there was a fear that developments were being planned without um, uh, integrating it into a larger transit plan. And I think since you, the last um, discussion last week was about Cyprus, and this one didn't deal with Cyprus at all, they felt they felt a little bit um, disjointed, and and they 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 were concerned. They there was a general approval and like of um, roundabouts, maybe not as many as we're discussing in Moss Beach, but uh, they were definitely much more in interested in roundabouts and in lights. Um, there was concerns about pedestrian uh, crossing in Montera around 2nd Street and maybe at uh, a light at Graywell Beach. And uh, right. Thanks, Jerry. I'm going to have to cut you off so we can move on. But I know there are a lot of things, other things you wanted to say fine. that I'm not letting no, you know. No, no, that's fine. I was just going to say thanks. Oh. Okay, thank you. And the last group is um, Ellie and Katie, 15. Hey, yeah. So we had a great group discussion too. Uh, we heard a lot of comments. Here are just a few of them. Um, we heard that most people work over the hill, and so we need more projects to help address that kind of traffic. We heard a desire to get the parallel trail completed because it's, it's an idea that's been around for a long time. Um, we had somebody who liked roundabouts, somebody who didn't like the idea of roundabouts. Um, Let's see, uh, need more improvements to get cars on Highway 1 and to get pedestrians across Highway 1, but there wasn't necessarily agreement that the projects we have suggested are the right ones. Um, there's a suggestion to slow traffic in Moss Beach to 40 miles per hour. That seemed to uh, be a popular one. Uh, direct buses to BART stations. Um, the use of coordination if we do put in traffic lights, if we have to. Uh, a suggestion to add lanes to Highway 1 is something that could be considered. Um, and a suggestion to add like on-ramps on or off-ramps to help get on the highway or off the highway. And I'll right. end well, thanks so much, everybody. Um, as, as you all noted, um, this was really brief. The report out was really brief. I, there were a lot of comments in the chat about um, this didn't get mentioned. It's all there. It's all there in the notes. So just because it didn't get mentioned now uh, doesn't mean it won't get prominence. Um, I just want to highlight a couple themes I heard. And again, this is not to say that these are the most important things. But what I heard was a lot of support for the parallel trail, uh, support for the safe route to school, um, a lot of interest in various Highway 1 crossings and some specific ideas about where those should locate, be located. So that's great. Uh, interest in seeing evacuation routes. And then a couple of the, the questions, comments, um, were more information about budget, more information about timing, and specifically projects that could be done in the short term. And then a lot of interest in continuing a detailed conversation. And so there will be um, opportunities for that. And um, it's a great segue to Katie to talk about next steps. Okay, yeah, thanks. Let me share my screen again. Hopefully everyone can see that. So we're just on report out. And now next steps. Okay, so yeah. So right now we're currently in the public outreach phase of this project. And as you know, we're holding these three virtual public meetings to gather input on the draft. And after these meetings are complete, we're going to release a report that summarizes what we heard. Um, at that point, uh, staff would then go to the MCC for a study session. We talk about what we heard and how we're anticipating updating the plan. If that goes well, we would, you know, we would update the plan uh, based on what we heard. And that could include refining recommendations, adding new projects, adding new information. Um, you know, at that point, we'd wanna review our outreach efforts to date to see if we need any more public outreach. Um, and after that public outreach process is completed, then that would be the time when we begin uh, the final draft review process for the plan. And so all that would include presenting the plan to the Midcoast Community Council again, um, the Half Moon Bay Planning Commission or City Council, um, the San Mateo County Planning Commission for the recommendation. And then finally the plan, the end result would be taking the plan to the Board of Supervisors for their consideration. So, 
We will be holding one more virtual conversation after this. It's scheduled for June 25th and we'll focus on El Granada, Miramar, and Princeton. And if anyone's interested, you're always invited to attend that one too. Um, and you can find out uh, how to register at the Connect the Ghostlight website or I have a link up on the screen. Uh, we're also, we've also been talking about a future study session with the Midcoast Community Council, basically to go over all this feedback we've received, um, put it all together and present it to them. And it's another point in time when somebody could, you know, uh, check in with us and comment. Uh, and I'm going quick because I know we're at eight o'clock and that brings us to the end of the meeting. Um, so if you have any questions or feedback, please feel free to reach out to us and please visit the Connect the Coastside website for more information. We really uh, wanna thank you for joining us today. Um, and then just one more thing, we have a post-meeting survey that we'll be sending out to you all. Um, and Debbie, I don't know if you have anything else you wanna say about that. Um, yeah, you can share your feedback on how the meeting went for you and any other comments that you feel like you didn't get a chance to make. We're also capturing the comments in the chat. Um, thank you so much. And then with that, I'd like to turn it back over to Supervisor Horsley um, for some last words. Oh, hi, Debbie. Uh, uh, thanks. And I just want to thank everybody for your comments. Um, there is a, there's a, a whole lot of different comments we'll have to put together. And the two things that stood out, that I just want to make a quick comment on evacuation. We are working with CAL FIRE and I guess also with your Coastside Fire um, Agency on a project called Zone Haven. We're thinking about uh, different evacuation, um, well, essentially evacuation um, plan. It's really difficult to say everybody goes east, n west, north, south. It really depends on what the uh, emergency is, but we are working on that. And the parallel trail, hopefully, we should be able to complete a segment of it um, hopefully sometime this year. And if, if all goes according to plan, we should be able to go always from, from uh, Fairlawn to your school, um, or no, actually it's all it's from, um, from El Granada always into Half Moon Bay. Half Moon Bay is gonna complete a section of their trail. Um, I know that's really important to folks. So I just do wanna thank everyone for participating. This is a really remarkable amount of participation and certainly a, a, a real divergence of views from one end to the other, which we will, of course, uh, I listen to all of them and uh, we'll uh, take all of them into consideration. So again, thank you. Thanks for sharing your evening with us.